We welcome back our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, and New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Gentlemen, good morning. good morning again, Rob. I should actually turn up John's microphone. Why? It's <laughs> a fair question. <laughs> then he's going to want to talk. <laughs> to just file the money, we're not paying him to be here. Yeah. Uh, from the Jefferson County Commission, Jennifer Krause joins us now. Jennifer, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Good morning, sir. And the, again, I'm hearing yeah, that yeah, echo hearing back that echo on back our. Uh, no, oh. Are you on speaker by chance? Speaker by chance. You know what? You are on speaker. Let me take you off. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that. I wonder if that's better. All right. Yes, that is much better. Hey. better. <laughs> problem has <Okay>. been solved. <laughs> All right, problem Simple solved. Problem, and yeah. we solved it. Very nice. Uh, speaking of solving problems, let's talk about the ordinance out of Jefferson County that is going to uh, restrict attendance of minors at events that are considered lewd, uh, lascivious, and uh, all sorts of other descriptive words in terms of inappropriate oh, yeah. behavior. And yes. uh, I'll let you, if you could, give us the description of the ordinance and, and tell us uh, what brought about its necessity. Well, the, this ordinance, what it, what it proposes to do, what it, what it has been adopted to do, is bar minors from attending adult live performances. Um, I uh, have heard from people, I don't know for sure, but I have heard from people, concerned citizens, that this is something that is happening or maybe uh, getting ready to happen in Jefferson County, and I wanted to nip this in the bud. Jennifer, if you could uh, tell me uh, who you consulted when uh, writing the ordinance and what sort of advice you got legally. Well, I will tell you, I did speak to uh, a team of people at the Attorney General's office in Charleston. Uh, I wrote the ordinance myself with with guidance from them. Are you secure that this ordinance as written would hold up in court if it had to be enforced? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. This is a... a um, there was a Tennessee law recently that was struck down by a judge, and I think the the issue with that one is that that was a very um, – their law was very broad. It, it may have violated the First Amendment, and they tried to draft something that would ban drag shows. This ordinance does not do that. This ordinance isn't about drag at all. It's about obscenity. And it's a very narrowly tailored ordinance. Would the ordinance hold parents responsible if they were bringing their kids to a show that might fit the description of what would violate this ordinance? Yes, sir, it would. Uh, the, uh, the, the ordinance does um, cover, uh, it does discuss, Barring, minor, barring minors from events where, uh, you know, obscene behavior is taking place, whatever that might be. And that is, that is defined clearly in, in the ordinance, obscenity. Um, it holds responsible um, the proprietor of a business that allows minors into an adult performance. It would also uh, be... Uh, parent or a guardian who brings a minor to such a performance. It could also be any performer who performs in such a performance knowing that there are minors present. So, yes, sir. How would this work in terms of enforcement? Would you be relying on somebody who's in attendance to file a complaint or call the police, for instance, and, and then uh, they would show up at the event and determine whether the event fulfilled the description of what would be a violation? Well, as a commission, we don't enforce ordinances, and that's up to the local law enforcement and our prosecutor. Uh, you would have to speak to them to determine how they plan to enforce this ordinance. My only concern here is to protect the children of Jefferson County. Have you spoken to the sheriff of Jefferson County about this ordinance in terms of its enforcement process? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Did you get any advice from the sheriff when uh, you were constructing the, the ordinance itself? Uh, no, I did not. I, I figured that would be more of a legal uh, question. So I spoke to, uh, as I mentioned, our attorney general's office and, and several people on, on a team there. And have you gotten any feedback from the sheriff's office about enforcing this or from the prosecutor's office? 
Uh, no, sir, I have not, but I have spoken to the sheriff's office about threats that have been leveled against commissioners uh, in the county, and that is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. And what are those threats stating right now, Jennifer? Well, they're, they're, I mean, I don't want to get too detailed about it, but they're, they're clearly they're out there on, on social media, uh, and uh, it's very, very distressing. Have there been threats one made against wonders, you? Yes. Yes, there have been. And, and one wonders why fights are to uh, allow children into obscene events and performances. Why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning, Jennifer. Uh, you, you spoke to uh, the attorney general's office. Uh, did you talk to your own prosecuting attorney? No, I did not. I, I went straight to the attorney general's office. So you crafted this ordinance without talking to either the local sheriff or the local prosecuting attorney, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. It's been my experience that things take an awful long time when you do that. And it's, in my uh, opinion, this is something that needed to be dealt with rather quickly. Let me dwell on obscenity very quickly. Uh, obscenity can be very broadly interpreted or very narrowly interpreted. Are you talking about obscenity in the form of language or in the form of behavior? Both. Both, so, okay. Um, yes, sir. So obscenity, you know, it is it is defined in West Virginia Code 714. Uh, it does get, uh, I'm not sure if you've looked at it, uh, but and I have it in front of me, but it does get very, very, uh, gets very detailed uh, about what constitutes obscene behavior. So uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know how detailed you want me to get on, on morning radio. No. Okay, uh, are the, does the detail, does the definition of obscenity uh, have a carve-out, if you will, for art and theater? Here's the thing. What this, what this ordinance is aiming to do is to bar minors from attending performances where obscene behavior is taking place, whatever that obscenity might be. And if you're, if you're 18 years and older, you can go and watch all of the obscenity that you want. This ordinance does not stop any kind of um, obscenity in the county. It doesn't aim at that. We're looking simply at protecting the children of Jefferson County. But the way you've described at this point that uh, folks been liable, one of the major fundraisers for the city of Shepherdtown uh, is the uh, Contemporary Arts Theater, uh, uh, C, uh, CCAP. Uh, CATF. CATF, thank you. Uh, so, and there's, there's obscenity in these productions. So if a, if a parent wanted to take their child to one of the CATF's Productions within Shepherdstown or Shepherd University, the producer or the actors would be legally liable. If it is a performance that that is producing obscene content as defined in our ordinance and in West Virginia Code, that is all you know from our U.S. Supreme Court decision Miller versus California, where that is very clearly defined. Then yes. So you'd be willing to children need to if you're 18 and older you can go and see whatever you want. So you're potentially saying that see the participants uh, or the performers of CATF would be due to a uh, 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 legal action because of this. So you you're basically putting the future of CATF online. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? Well, I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Well, uh, I, it has been it has been ridiculously suggested that screenings of MASH, for instance, or Mrs. Doubtfire, that those kinds of things would not be allowed because that would be, you know, men dressing up as women. But that is, that is just patently, that's just ridiculous. And, and it's a lie. This, it, I've never been to a CATF performance. It sounds like I might not like it if it's terribly obscene. But what, what I'm saying is it's very clearly defined in code, West Virginia code, as well as Supreme Court law, what obscenity is. And if there's nudity, if there's, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go, 
I don't want to go too far into it on morning radio. We, we've read it. Is, we've read it already, Jennifer. You can get as detailed good, as you want. Good. Go right ahead if you want to. Well, well, what about? I mean, people listening. But okay, it's okay, so, they can handle it. Okay, that's great. So, um, depicts or describes in a patently offensive way ultimate sexual acts, normal or perverted, actual or simulated. Uh, it moves down to talk about uh, depicts or describes patently offensive representation of masturbation, excretory functions, lewd exhibition of the genitals, sodomy, fellatio. I, I mean, must I go on? Uh, is that happening over at Shepherd University? I hope not. Uh, not well, I, but I was talking about language a while ago primarily, and you did not make the exception for the language. So there is there is sinity in the CATF, and but that fell within your category of what would be legally liable. Sir, I have clearly stated, I haven't said anything about language. What I've talked about is as defined in West Virginia Code and the Supreme Court decision Miller versus California, what obscene material in this ordinance refers to. John Gilstrap. Hi, Jennifer. Um, I, I'm a writer. I'm a creative guy. I've got like four million words in print around the world. And I will tell you that judging from emails that I get from people with low senses of humor or whatever, it's an astonishingly low bar for what people consider to be offensive or obscene. Um, I, the, the whole Explain to me why it's not enough for parents of their minor children to make the decision whether or not they can bring their minor children to something that you might find offensive. We have seen all across this country videos. I know that, I know that you have. I know I have. Uh, disturbing videos of sexual behavior with children present in certain venues. Why is that acceptable? It's well, unacceptable who, in Jefferson County. Well, <laughs> in, it's unacceptable to you and, and some of the other commissioners in Jefferson County. I don't understand the presumption of or the preemption of, of a county uh, ordinance over what a parent allows their kid to watch or to attend. You know, all things in balance, right? I mean, there's no such thing in my, you know, this is, this is, Gospel according to John, there is no such thing as a bad word. There is bad intent. There's no such thing as a bad image. There is bad intent. Some of the, the most provocative communication, I mean provocative in a good way, um, comes from stuff that, that makes people feel uncomfortable. I just, the, the notion, there's a question here somewhere, the, the notion that the, the county commission can override a parent's view of what their children should see. I, I find that abhorrent. Okay, so so my apologies for interrupting. Uh, I thought that you had paused. There was a little bit of a delay there. Um, my Bible does tell me in Judges chapter 12, verse 25, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That is not, that is not the way that we want to behave. The, you know, the idea, why, why would a parent want to show their children disgusting and obscene material. Why? That's terrible. Uh, if, if, the, if the opponents of this ordinance really want to stake the claim that children, you know, should be allowed to view, of, you know, offensive and obscene behavior, uh, that really tells you an awful lot about their, intent, about their intention regarding children. Why, why is this so important? Wouldn't it be common sense? And I have to say, just a few short years ago, I don't think that any of us would, would have questioned anything like this. this. But this is happening more and more around this country, and I was elected to do a job, and I'm doing it. This is just something that is very important, not just to me and not just to a couple of the other commissioners. This is important to very many people in our county. Uh, you know, I, I was extremely offended uh, by a fellow commissioner's comment about this being compared to a Nazi Germany uh, time. What a reprehensible thing to say comparing the two. Uh, and she, she ought to be ashamed of herself. Her comments 
are an insult to families who suffered under Nazi rule and the Holocaust. She ought to be ashamed. You know, that that That's just a terrible thing to say and not at all similar. Jennifer Krause, our guest here from the Jefferson County Commission. Jennifer, we had the commission president, Steve Stolifer, on, and he was uh, he was one of the two no votes, along with Commissioner Tabb, and I, I assume you're referring to Commissioner Tabb uh, with your comments just there. Uh, but uh, one of his concerns was that there wasn't room for public comment before this was passed. Should there have been room for public comment? So that's interesting that our commission president uh, said that. Uh, time and again, Commissioner Stolliper has shown that he's quite capable of moving an issue through our, our process quickly when it's one that he feels is important. Unfortunately, it seems that protecting children doesn't make it onto his list of things that are important. Um, and then the next part I wanted to ask you about before you go, Bill, was uh, we rate movies which restrict children's attendance at these movies. That's why we give them ratings. We, we view the content and we say whether or not they're appropriate for children or not. Uh, Commissioner Stolliper said the comments he's received for this ordinance are pretty much all negative, the, the people against the ordinance. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but why do you think there's been so much backlash in regards to this ordinance? Well, first I'll say this. If Commissioner Stolliper is getting the same emails that I'm getting, then, then I, I think he's being disingenuous. Uh, I have gotten a great deal of positive feedback from this ordinance. This ordinance was not hidden from anybody. This was not a secret. Uh, this the proposed ordinance was announced on the Friday before the meeting as it was required to be. It was up on our website for five and a half days for anyone to see, and believe me, it was not a secret. Plenty of people saw it, and they made their opinions known both before and during the meeting. But the truth is the truth, and it isn't changed by public opinion. So, you know, I, I do believe that, that I'm receiving I'm receiving positive feedback. I'm receiving negative feedback. I, I would not say at all that one outweighs the other. I certainly would not. And I just wanted to say, I don't think anybody in this room, and I don't know anybody out there that's in favor of taking their child to pornographic uh, experience, uh, lewd, lascivious, anything that would fit those descriptions. I think the the couple of the concerns, though, that I as as I'm hearing them would be. Uh, one, this seems like it's going to be a challenge to enforce because it's going to be based on somebody's interpretation of what they're seeing, and then it creates an issue after that. Uh, the other part of that, uh, I think there's some concern that the Republican Party, a party of small government, is overreaching on some restriction of behaviors here that, generally speaking, they feel should be left to the families. To decide. That's the feedback that I'm getting, Jennifer. I don't think it's anybody saying they want kids to go and see something that would be considered pornographic. So, if I, I would like to say, uh, if you if you haven't seen the videos that are easily available to watch online, there have been across this country many cases of of venues that have included, uh, welcomed children, even small children, into a place showing disgusting, obscene behavior, and I don't want that to happen here. That's all I'm doing. This ordinance is, is only intended to protect our children, and that's it. I, this does not, this is not a, a you know, this is not a this is a very clear, very simple to understand and, and easily explained ordinance and, you know, why anybody would want to bring a child to a venue or a performance that is uh, defined as obscene is, is beyond me. I, I, you cannot call that art. I'm sorry. Jennifer, I uh, I interviewed you during your campaign, and one of your platforms was transparency. Uh, yet this discussion was done in executive session. 
I've tried to find the minutes of the, uh, the county commission uh, of that day. I cannot, uh, but the, it, I've been told everything is discussed in executive session. Two things bothers me there. You've lost all transparency, and it is a clear, clear violation of the Sunshine Law. This is not something that, it, that warrants executive session. This is something that begs to be discussed in open public. So how can you justify the deliberation being behind closed doors in executive well, session? Jennifer, got a minute left. Final word, yours. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I don't know who was discussing with you what we discuss in executive session. I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. What I will say is during executive session, we did not discuss much about my particular ordinance that evening. There were other things that we were discussing. I am all about transparency, all about it. And several times since I've taken my seat in January, I have questioned, must we go into executive session for this? This seems something that the public would like to hear about. And I am repeatedly told, yes, we have to, yes, we have to. This, this was not something that was uh, discussed uh, in any detail at all during executive session. Jennifer, I appreciate you coming on the program today to answer some questions. And I, I wish you a fine day. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Have a great day, Jen.